Hello, and welcome to a brand new episode of Ghoulish. I am Max Booth, a host. And today on the program, I welcome back a previous guest, Matthew M. Beltlet, author of so many really creepy books that I'm sure you've read. And if you haven't read them, hey, what's going on? Why haven't you read those books he's written? On this episode, we will talking about shitty jobs, corporate horror, spooky occupations. Uh, because, well, recently we both quit the jobs we had that we hated really much. So we thought we would kind of get together and celebrate this uh, mutual freedom we've uh, claimed. And also he has this really cool subscription syllabus thing going on that I think everybody should subscribe to. We talk about it in the episode, so stay tuned. I'll also have a link to how to subscribe to his monthly chapbook syllabus in the show notes. So just click that link and go subscribe. I've already done it. I can't wait to see what he begins putting out next month because it's already December 2020, meaning next month. Somehow, by some goddamn miracle, we've made it through this fucking year. So with that said, uh, anything else do I need to say? Yes. The answer to that question I just asked myself is yes. It's almost Christmas, so if you'd like to give uh, books as gifts, you will run out of time to buy a spooky book from my uh, my publishing company, Perpetual Motion Machine Publishing. If you uh, want something to give as a gift by Christmas, I recommend buying something uh now, pause this, pause this episode and go buy it. It's already December 11th. I can't guarantee anything at this point. The postal syllabus is out of my hands. But you can go to perpetualpublishing.com, pick up some books, buy them. And if you don't know what to buy uh, your friends and family as a Christmas gift, we now have freaking... Uh, gift cards available. You can just buy a gift card and said, "Hey, hey, hey, pal, here's a here's, here's an email, and it has this much money uh, worth to it. You can only spend it at this fucking publishing the company based in Texas. So, uh, happy fucking holidays, baby. Yeah, you can get that uh, subscription. Uh, what? No, what is it called? The gift card." <laughs> <laughs> you get the gift card at perpetualpublishing.com too. They will, uh, I will be including a show note in the <laughs> episode description. I feel like a goddamn idiot every time I recall one of these intros. I'm talking to nobody. Is anybody listening? I don't know. Oh, uh, that should be it. Oh, wait, one last thing. One last thing before we get to uh, Matthew's episode. I want to do like a ghoulish Christmas special episode, perhaps. And uh, to do this, I thought I could read uh, spooky Christmas stories on, uh, on on the podcast. True spooky Christmas stories. So, if something uh, spooky or terrifying or creepy has ever happened to you around Christmas time, I would love to know about it. I would love to tell my audience. So, if you uh, have something like that, you want to talk, you want to chill with me, all you gotta do is email that story to ghoulishpod at gmail.com. That's a ghoulishpod at gmail.com. Get this to me, I don't know, before Christmas Eve, I guess. I, I, I will try to put this out on Christmas Day. Lots of folks listening to podcasts on Christmas, right? I don't know. I don't know. Anyway... Let's, uh, let's go to my conversation with Matthew about uh, shitty jobs. Yeah, because you know the thing about jobs, right? They aren't great. <laughs> <laughs> <coughs> oh my god, that's awful. <laughs> Alright, uh, <laughs> Matthew, this is a, a strange episode because I feel like we've done this already. Yeah, there's definitely a sense of uh, deja vu. Um, <laughs> yeah, we can acknowledge it to the, to the listening audience. We did uh, record this podcast um, a couple weeks ago, and uh, I just 
determined that uh, I was a little raw at the time. So <laughs> there's stuff I don't want public, and maybe someday it'll be a Patreon only thing somewhere, you know. But uh, I figured we'd do a do over, and we could cover, you know, some of the same ground without, uh, you know, stepping into the areas that I didn't want to step into last time, but did anyway. Yeah, and for anyone who wants to listen to the original recording, uh, PayPal me ten bucks. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe I'll save it for like a way to the the blackmail you down the road because you did yeah, say you some did. highly uh, offensive things about all topics. Everything, everything. I would be uh, canceled. I remember we did we did that recording on a Zoom and you had this strange level red jacket. You look quite raw. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I was delirious. Uh, <laughs> uh, this is going to be an episode about uh, bad jobs, about a culprit, ooh, spooky occupations. Those are the three ways yeah. I know how to say it. Yeah, that's good. I like it. Uh, um, yeah, so I mean, just getting out of the way, like the book slash literature aspect of it, um, uh, Resume with Monsters by William Brown. Spencer is a, a good resource for those uh, interested in terror-filled uh, work situations. And, of course, Legati's My Work Is Not Yet Done, uh, which is sort of a mini collection of four stories. I uh, recommend those highly. But but let's get back to me. <laughs> well, before we get back to you, I'll also recommand sure. uh, Skullcrack City by uh, Jeremy uh, Rabble Johnson, which I think I recommended last time. Have you read it yet? I have not. It is... Uh on the shelf though and ready to be read by me yeah it's a good uh, book about a guy with a, a job he hates and a cosmical uh, awaits him i'll also uh, recommend a book called the nightly disease by max booth <laughs> that, was, that was about me <laughs> yeah uh, uh apparently from what i've heard a terrible guy but a great writer yeah, I mean he's uh I mean the the main kill told that book is an absolute sociopath and he is me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I like that. I like it. So um uh what was I gonna say? Jumping right in. Um the only thing I wanna say about my most recent job, which I, I left to pursue self employment for a while, is uh the, the COVID uh um I guess I call it um, well, all right. We got a, an email saying everybody must wear masks in the building at all times. Right? And no, I was the only one, literally the only one. People would take their mask off to talk in my cube area. Um, it was insane. And, and that definitely factored into, uh, um, particularly with the, the resurgence of, uh, you know, the second wave coming in. Um, people were very blasé and and um it was crazy yeah um now for anyone listening to this episode in the future uh should we explain what covid was because i'm pretty sure after the month of december it's just gonna go away right yeah yeah it's a it's a, basically it's a cold yeah is what yeah. i'm told yeah what i'm told is um, it's something the democrats invented to uh i don't know right. fix the election Right, to make people dislike uh, Trump uh, even more. Um, it was a truly nasty little trick. Anyway, no, nothing yeah. we just said was true. Uh, no. Please uh, give us jobs in the future. Uh <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, um, but yeah, so I, I uh, remember you mentioning that when we in our first recording that um, there was something sort of related to that when you... Um, Yes. Uh, stopped working at your most recent job. Yeah. And what was that? Yeah. So uh, for those who uh, don't know listening, I also recently quit a job. I did a, the night shift at a hotel for eight yields and I quit uh, back in September. And yeah, COVID was a nightmare with the hotel. We, the uh, management, they got rid of a, a bunch of staff, including laundry and the uh the kitchen cook and suddenly i just got those uh duties assigned to me on my night shift and no Ooh. extra pay was assigned or offered <laughs> i just suddenly <laughs> had to do all my usual night night shift duties and also 
clean all of the the day's laundry and separate and fold everything and then uh propel like a like 50 to 100 to go breakfast bags and if i didn't complete everything i was <laughs> berated and called uh, u- <laughs> useless and how i didn't have anything to do and i should have gotten it all done this <laughs> all while wearing a mask and uh trying to do all these safety protocols i began like mopping twice a night just to make sure everything was clean i was constantly wiping things down throughout the lobby and elevator but again i guess i uh, i did nothing my whole time uh on my shift uh one thing we uh changed was we decided well i didn't i'm not included in decisions <laughs> they decided yeah. uh to limit how many uh guests would touch the coffee pot in the morning they would have it behind the front desk and they would line up and i would make them coffee like we were at a starbucks <laughs> so oh, every boy. morning uh, in addition to like doing my doc my audit documents and uh various other things i would have to stop whatever i was doing whenever uh someone would come up and want coffee and i would have to fix some coffee i would have to ask like well do you want sugar or cream what kind of cream and i would have to make it and still and put a lid on and <laughs> add it to them and i had this whole line of guests getting pissed at me that i'm not being quick enough with the coffee and then i have little guests you want to check out guests who will piss because who knows why maybe they didn't get a receipt maybe they don't understand that when you check into a hotel they typically hold an additional amount of money until after you check out despite the fact that they will insist that they've stayed at hundreds of hotels in the past and this is the only hotel who's ever held such a hold even though that's a lie uh I have lots of issues with hotel guests. I don't know if you can tell. <laughs> I can tell. I can tell. And then on top of that, uh, the laundry's piling up, Max. Yeah, the laundry's piling up, and we're gonna, someone's going to come in and go, why didn't you uh, fold this laundry? Why didn't you wash and dry all this laundry? And I'm just there's a tiny uh, boy in my skull just <laughs> screaming. <laughs> And it was uh, gross. Amazing. It was really gross laundry. I mean, especially with COVID being ever present in my head, just touching anything. It's like, okay, what am I about to get? I don't. Yeah. I'm, I don't know how uh, uh, the, it's uh, contacted. I don't know if I touch something that was uh, sneezed on by a COVID guy. If I'm oh, going to get right. it or not. I mean, I saw some of the most disgusting uh, things in this laundry shoot. Just sheets covered in feces i mean it was oh, absolutely horrendous oh lord it's amazing you didn't end up on the news but i do remember that you did uh there were some harrowing uh social media posts just about how bad covid was there and um and then uh i hear that when you uh when you ended up leaving they made fun of you <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> They did. They, uh, I put in my uh, two weeks notice, and my uh, friend who was working the the AM shift, I had him tell me what was what they how they reacted, and he said, "Oh, yeah. uh, my boss just laughed and said, ha, Max is afraid of COVID, and that's why he's leaving.'" <laughs> This is the same. This is the same woman who, like, I think this this was in July when COVID was fucking nuts. She yeah. uh, had her like fucking eighty year old mother drive down to uh, San Antonio along with her old sister, and the three of them went to uh, get the uh, toenails. Uh, what do you what do you call it? Manicure. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, they went to get manicures. I'm like, what the fuck. <laughs> That's insane. Absolutely insane. Yeah, you start, to, you start to wonder, am I the crazy one? It, it has am to be I because, yeah, everybody around you is acting like it's fine. But then it's like, but it, I don't think it is fine, guys. No, it's not fine. Uh, um, one little thing about that yeah, family it, before we move on. Sure. It just makes me laugh a lot. Uh, the uh, my boss's, My ex-boss's family would stay two or three times a year and uh she has this brother who is just really strange and every time he would see he's a he's a guy who gets up around full five o'clock in the morning to drink lots of coffee and walk around and make small talk so every uh, morning he would get up 
and he ha like has this strange habit of wanting to shake your hand every time he sees you. So he would he would walk down the hallway from his room, sh want to shake my hand. He would get a cup of coffee, walk out, smoke a cigarette, come back in, and then want to shake my hand again. Oh, God. And then he wanted to do it what this is... this time this uh this July. He wanted to do it again. I'm like, I'm not touching your hand. And he's like, Oh, what are you one of those COVID guys? <laughs> I went, Yeah, one... I guess I am. <laughs> yeah, I guess you're one of those COVID guys. Coward. <laughs> I guess so. <laughs> Afraid of death. <laughs> I mean, it, you know, uh, apparently that job was not uh, only worth the uh, whatever the amount of money was that you made, but your life too. Uh, um, a lot of jobs just, will seem will seem to think that, like, in addition to being paid some pitiful wage, that you should be willing to <laughs> risk your life. Yeah, and happily, happily, so without complaining, and you know, um, and, and that little thing, uh, like, risking my life wise was, uh, I began like i guess to them throwing a tantrum <laughs> okay. about the fact that i uh did not want to continue taking the day's trash out to the dumpster like at three in the morning because mm -hmm. the dumpster was located across the parking lot and now to set this up like visually uh the hotel is the front of the hotel is facing the highway and the back of the hotel is a big parking lot followed by endless woods and that's where okay. the dumpster was and uh anytime i would walk out wood? yeah it, it was next to the woods so oh. uh <laughs> and uh the thing about uh being next to the woods is lots of wildlife was out and anytime i would walk out with a trash can i would have to like th uh, roll it against the dumpster and just watch dozens of raccoons jump out of it <laughs> so I told him, like, hey, I don't want to get bit by some fucking raccoon. There's no reason why, like, the maintenance guy can't take this out in the morning when he comes in if I have it all collected and ready for yeah. him to roll out. But they thought that was, like, the laziest thing and the real sin of all time. Wow. The raccoons are not, I mean, no matter how many videos you might see online of raccoon like playing with a cat they're not safe to uh to approach hell no man i i'm from the midwest well the raccoons will just like yeah we live here <laughs> they they will yeah. kill you yeah. they will slit your throat that's right yeah. <laughs> uh, <laughs> well i mean you know a life and death stuff i worked at a place where um someone i i found them literally face down in their cubicle not moving uh, um, and I called 911. I mean, they were so still, it looked like a dead person to me. Oh, no. Uh, oh, I called 911, and I got in trouble for it. <laughs> because you're supposed to call, like, Fred from Accounting, who runs the office uh, emergency thing, and the, the people get trained on CPR and stuff. Um but I thought, you know, this person might be dead or in danger of dying. Yeah. And uh, you can't do that. You can't call 911. Wow. Um, that's bad. Yeah, they you know, call Fred. But we have to pay for the ambulance. So, uh, yeah, I just didn't want the person to be in the hands of uh, Fred from accounting. So uh, uh, did this co live? Yes. Yes. Yeah, they were fine. It was a, a case of uh, overwork. Big oh, stuff. Okay. Wow. Yeah. What kind of job yeah. was this? This was um in educational testing. Oh, okay. Um yeah. It was um it was a good job altogether, but there were definitely, you know, in, in any job there are elements uh there are managers who are maybe not trained in managing people. Um and you know, things can go downhill when you encounter those, but I was there for a very long time with, with very little, little issue. So you um, had passed out and then Fred had to perform CPL on you. Right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Fred was all right. Fred was a good guy. He, he, uh, he could save your life, but, um, I don't know. In any job, there are going to be like people who are like tattletales and stitches. Yes. <laughs> um, <laughs> and people who are bullies. 
communities. Um, and I was a manager for a while and it, it really, it's something I think people need training for in a lot of places. Like if you just do a good job, they're like, well, you know, we should promote you to management, regardless of whether you know how to, to deal with people, to train people, to, to work with other human beings uh, in a position of authority. Um, I think there should be something more than like a, a day long workshop where you draw fire engines on a, on a, like a whiteboard uh, or try to make a dinosaur thor out of legos you know which is literally uh explain i wish i could uh it was a <laughs> it was a management training course it was all day long uh they had us uh they had easels not whiteboards easels with big white sheets of paper and it would be like you know draw a team you know that kind of thing or um work together in groups to take these legos and make a dinosaur out of them and of course immediately after that i went back to work and was building dinosaurs with people um <laughs> yeah there's just nothing about like sort of how to deal with people who aren't doing their, their job um or to deal with people who have interpersonal conflict um to any anything really that you actually have to do when you're a manager like how to even write a performance evaluation um so basically you might end up with um, untrained people who, who just they whatever their personality is it just comes flying into their management role good or bad I think I've maybe had one good boss out of the countless jobs I've had in all of my yields <laughs> <laughs> I mean I've, I've had some great ones and yeah. and one of, one of my uh, favorite bosses was uh Genu genuinely interested in the people she worked for, really just wanted to do a good job. But her boss was a nightmare of a human being who would make her come in nights and weekends. She was salaried, so there's no extra pay for that. Yeah. And call her and berate her over the phone until she cried and, and or threw up. Oh. Um, so you have a case of a very, very good manager being a, literally abused by uh, an upper management that person and th that's not good um and it just sort of is allowed to happen no matter you because if you call human resources in in a situation like that uh their job is always to side with the person in the highest position of authority at least in the uh, in a, a couple of places that i work maybe that's not true every um but they definitely uh not, I've not seen him be an advocate for, for the worker unless it's like literally a sexual harassment type of situation, which fortunately I've never encountered. Yeah. I, uh, the last GM I had at this hotel, I saw, I think three AGMs go through this woman. She just, they, she couldn't manage anybody, especially the AGM. One of the AGMs we had, I came in one night at 11, and she was just in the back office crying from how stressful mm -hmm. it was. And mm -hmm. uh, the other one quit. <laughs> the other guy, who I liked quite a bit, he uh, he lost his job for uh, reasons I probably shouldn't say. Uh, I don't know. I've worked so many many different places, like from a, a lumberyard. Here's a lumberyard story for you. I must have been... 17 it was a uh, organization that no longer exists i think called rickle and it was like a home, home depot kind of a place and i watched a guy get on the forklift uh on the, the whatever you call them the tines of the forklift and another guy lifted him all the way up to and this was outside and then shook and tilted the tines of the the um the what's the word that i just said and now can't remember for forklift uh and he's up there giggling and laughing like seconds from falling to a concrete floor <laughs> and I'm like, I'm like this is chaos um and i, I used to do that it's insane and then uh, there was a time that i went to uh it was really hot out and the, the carpet guy was standing there with a papa gino's cup papa gino's is a regional uh pizza chain as you would probably have guessed it's not a chicken place or whatever but um, I was like, man, I'm sweating to death. Can I get a sip of your uh, of your your uh, drink? And it uh, turned out it was rum. 
<laughs> Did it help you? No, no. I don't know how I'm doing it. it made me nauseous. But um Wait, did they tell I you mean, that's a... Rob ahead of time? No. No, he just gave me like this half smile and said, Here you go. Um so I'm thinking like I'm gonna get a couple of big gulps of Pepsi and feel a little better or whatever. And it was rough. Wow. I'm like, wow, on the job. I had a so when I used to go to a grocery store I built out overnight, I would show up almost blackout drunk on numeral shifts, and it was not a good idea. No, no, bad I, idea. I spilled so much pet food, <laughs> <laughs> but I wasn't I wasn't driving, so it was okay. I, this a guy who yeah. lived by me. He uh, also built the same shift, so he would drive uh, me to the job with him because I uh, did not have a license. So I would just uh, load up ahead of time, and then it's time to do a new shift at this shitty job. Oh my god! Yeah, I only one one time ever have I gone to a job imbibed and or having imbibed. It was it was uh, marijuana. I was, God, eighteen. Yeah. Um. And I don't, uh, uh, I don't care for the marijuana anymore. But at the time, I was very impaired, and it turns out that I had to work with the extremely in- intimidating, like head of the place, who who just always looked at you as though you were a despicable worm. And um, <laughs> and I had to like work the sidewalk sale with him, and I'm just high as a kite, and I'm, I'm thinking, I'm never, ever, ever, ever going to do this again if if I just get out of this alive. <laughs> Uh, yeah. And I did, but uh, that was that was terrifying. And I never, ever, ever, like, ever went to work even hungover ever again. Yeah, <laughs> it's not not a good idea. Yeah, no. It was way easier to uh, go to get drunk at real at a job like the hotel, especially before they added cameras, because you could, it's, yeah. it was pretty laid back. Uh, I used to a lot with a uh, a co local before before he uh, quit and moved on, he would do the 3 to 11 shifts. So after I clocked in, he would clock out and just kind of hang back for a few hours, and we would just sit in the back office just drinking way too much alcohol. And it wow. it led to us multiple... We, we came up with this game of uh, collecting things around the hotel in a bag, Philly truck, and going up to the roof and just seeing what we could hit. <laughs> <laughs> we would we would end up uh october was the best month because we would come in with pumpkins in a little trunk that we would buy and just drop them off the roof completely intoxicated <laughs> now, see, that's a good job yeah uh, you know until it is but uh yeah uh, i uh never really had any i'm trying to remember if i ever had any jobs or you can I, all i can tell you is if you do i'm 50 years old and Ages ago, there were, instead of Target, uh, there was Bradley's and Caldor, Mm -hmm. uh, stores like that. And I worked at a Caldor, and everybody who worked there, uh, with the exception of me, stole on a grand scale. Like, TVs were going out the back loading (laughs) dock. Things things were going through the registers and not being rung up. I mean, I watched people walk out with... uh, tv and a shopping cart that never saw the register it was insane people's friends would come in uh the people who worked in the photography department uh, in the days when you would actually have to bring in film and get it developed into physical photographs what do you mean they would look at everybody's pictures uh keep the the ones that were funny copy the ones that were dirty (laughs) oh no Um, oh no it was a (laughs) free for all it was a free so if you ever if you're my age or, or older and you ever brought in film to be developed uh someone was looking at your pictures unless they were boring so uh, um and a lot of them were but it, uh it blows my oh, mind yeah, was... that someone would take like a let's say a naughty photo that they don't want anyone to see and then have it developed like at a fucking kinkos or something that's crazy yeah, they don't to me. Think about it. i mean they, the way they think it works i think is that it goes through a machine, gets thrown automatically into an envelope, and, and no human hands ever touch it or look at it. And it did not work that way. Um, so, yeah, that's probably news for some people. <laughs> but, but, oh, yeah, I mean, people would take four-hour prints. 
earthquakes. It, it was just completely insane. Like Cal, that's that's probably the reason there isn't a Caldor anymore, uh, um, <laughs> because everyone who worked at Rod the place is blind. Um, wow, I never I never stole from uh, any job except the uh, hotel job, and that was more like, oh, we need toilet paper, and I don't want to stop on the way home. <laughs> yeah, sure. <laughs> <laughs> yeah i mean you know everyone i think uh takes a, a binder clip i think to close their potato chip bags with yeah. or something but um yeah well, i we, never i take that back we would do this sometimes at the grocery store shop we had uh we would uh say oh this <laughs> the bag of chips is damaged and we would just open it and leave it in one aisle and then throughout the shift we would all just walk up and grab a handful <laughs> yeah <laughs> I think that's okay. I think that, I mean, it's the biggest uh, yeah. still in the the country, so I think it's doing okay. Yeah, they probably did all right. Yeah, I had, I had a girlfriend whose parents uh, or her family worked, um, I think, in delivering uh, groceries and stuff, and anything that was, like, slightly dinged or damaged, they just throw it in a box. So we just got to kind of have our pick of, uh, you know, quote-unquote, uh, damaged, written off merchandise, like a bag of Oreos with a, you know, that, that where three of them were broken, you know, <laughs> stuff like that. I, uh, I'm really glad I was lucky enough to uh, recently get away from a day job. And I realize anybody listening to this podcast is probably thinking, oh, let's listen to these uh, ungrateful fucks. <laughs> <laughs> at least you're able to get jobs and uh i have no uh, excuse for that yeah i mean I, it's for me i, I happened upon a, an idea for this uh, chat book subscription service that i'm doing so a bunch of people are getting a, a chat book a month for some for some money and i have savings and i don't have any credit card debt and i don't have kids and um it's probably insane to you know, willingly become self-employed during a pandemic when it's ramping up. But um, it was just something I, I felt I had to do. How long did it take you to get into the mindset of being self-employed rather than unemployed? Oh, I still struggle with it, particularly when friends of mine are clearly uh, in a position where they've lost a job due to, the, due to COVID. And I kind of consider myself as having gone into self-employment because of covid because of the you know the blase attitude about protecting uh the workers and things like that but um it yeah when people are struggling and they're worried about never you know about they can't find a job i'm like what have i done i've like willingly put myself in in a in a precarious position but um you know uh i didn't do it without planning um and things like that but uh, um yeah it's, it's a little scary so it's, i whenever i freak out i remind myself that i am uh self-employed not un unemployed and i do have uh you know something of an income stream so um but and there was something else i wanted to talk about before i forgot it but ages ages ago i worked at a job where my office was a, adjacent to uh, uh, one of the manager's offices, and the manager would leave the door open uh, and berate people on speakerphone, uh, and then after the call, uh, make fun of them with other with other managers. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm just sitting there, like I'm trying to work, and I have to hear like, uh, yeah, I mean, can you imagine? Managers uh, are the most petty species on this planet. They, they can be. And, and I heard, you know, I had worked elsewhere in that company and been completely oblivious to any interpersonal conflicts or uh, people who just hated each other for whatever reason. I just didn't know about it. And then suddenly when I'm when I when my desk is next to an open door where everybody just talks about every talks trash about everybody <laughs> else, um, like they're talking about they were talking about like getting someone for fraud uh and they talked about it like every day for like two or three weeks how this person was going down and and they were on to him <laughs> and then nothing ever happened uh and the, the person still works there and there was never and i'm like what i shouldn't know this uh i think you know, this it, all it, comes from like look at how much like 
writing and this the writing community like takes up our lives but when you don't yeah. have something to fill that empty space i think you latch on to shit like this yeah you might be right you might be right because i think there are people who need um conflict or or someone to 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 look down on uh and on on facebook you can just look down on like a COVID denying Trump supporter, and it's easy. Uh, and in the writing community, in the writing community, you can look down on someone who I don't know. Um, Name someone. Just <laughs> 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 say Clinton and quote unquote write circles around other writers, you know, and people like that, and, and they're fun too. Like uh, Jeff you know? Fandelmeal. <laughs> 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 Uh, uh, let's, for the record, say that Jeff Vandermeer is very nice <laughs> and awesome. And uh, uh, didn't he? Uh, I'm trying to remember you. And he had a, one of the funniest interactions I've ever seen on social media. <laughs> we, I can't remember. Somehow, can't remember. with me and him, it has gotten to like we've created this universe. Like if. If we build a TV show, this is the TV show universe. Will I, Max Booth, love to uh, have sex with insects? And, uh, yeah, <laughs> and, and right. Jeff that's is right. really offended by this. But in real life, he uh, Jeff's the one who fucks bugs, not me. <laughs> <laughs> uh, speaking of sex, I do have one thing are, to say. Are we, we, we going to have to record this a third time? <laughs> <laughs> no. <laughs> Uh, speaking of sex, uh, Jack, uh, not Jeff, uh, speaking of sex and petty managerials, my, uh, lax, my last, uh, story I'll say is back at that grocery store job, as I mentioned, I, a friend in the code local would drive me to the place. Uh, and at one point he began having the secret, uh, uh, fill with one of the old AGMs. And he also happened to be engaged with someone out of the States. And when that Ooh. woman uh, moved back to Texas, my friend broke things up with the AGM, and she did not take that lightly. She got really upset, and because I was always around him, she began to associate me with him and would take out the little <laughs> uh, rage yeah. on both of us. She would constantly assign both of us extra duties that no human being could possibly do in one shift <laughs> and just yell at us and threaten to red us up, and I would just always look at him and go, was it worth it, you son of a bitch? <laughs> <laughs> it better have been good. Uh, yeah. That's all I have. Uh, do you want to talk a little about this chat book syllabus you just launched? Sure. It's um, going to be for 2021. It's um, uh, the base subscription is basically a chat book uh, called. I have a fictional radio station called WXXT, um, and the chat book is called the WXXT Program Guide. Um, it'll come out once a month in 2021. It will contain short fiction and vignettes and, um, like playlists and DJ biographies. And it's all, uh, kind of under the category of grotesque supernatural horror fiction. Um, at a, at a slightly higher level, people can get that, uh, signed and scribed and, uh, my cat's paw print on the on the cover page um at certain people at the highest level of subscription will get a hard, hard cover uh comprising all of the chat books uh once they're all written at the end of the year um and all kinds of little treats like a, a wxxt employer parking sticker and uh, identification card and just kind of uh goofy stuff like that uh t-shirts um so it's kind of taken on a life of its own and people are, are signing up and it's exciting and fun and um i hope to give people a really good quality illustrated uh product and how can folks sign up uh they can look up gare g-a-r-e occult uh on basically um through me on my twitter which is at matt m bartlett uh my facebook which is matthew m bartlett um and uh, I think it, it may or may not come up on a Google search, but they can they can get in touch with me 
through any social media way and and, uh, and find out more details. Cool. I will also have a link in the show notes, so you can just click that as well. Yeah, that makes it easy. Thank you. Hey, no problem. If you enjoyed today's episode of Ghoulish, hey, why don't you uh, go leave a review on iTunes? Talk about it. Say, hey, I like this podcast. It was cool. It did good things to my body. Also, go buy the books we publish at uh, perpetualpublishing.com. I uh, publish books like uh, Michael David Wilson's The Girl in the Video, Jessica Lennell's Antioch, Pa Michael Anderson's Stand Alone. And I even write books too. My latest novella, We Need to Do Something. My latest novel, Touch the Night. You can get both of those at the same website, perpetualpublishing.com. You can also support the podcast and the whole indie publishing company at patreon.com slash